Hi friend. You know, today we got a really bad mess in our workbench area. A lot of stuff on the floor. We got a lot of stuff from the house that came down here. Uh, we're going to find a new place for it. Got to put those back plates on the Marshall and the Mesa. I was doing some tube rolling and uh, I got some tubes that I really like on there. Did a few things. I took the pick guards off my uh, Gibson. I think it looks decent. Uh, it was giving me some static issues. Uh, it seems to be a problem with the satin finished Gibsons. Couldn't figure it out for a long time. So I just took the pick guards off and it seems to help a lot. Uh, we're going to also listen to some sound samples of the Tube Screamer build that we have. And I think we're going to give that away today. Let's decide how we're going to get it to somebody. Hey, if that sounds good, join me. All right, let's get these back plates put on these two amps. This is the first thing we have to do because we're going to move all these out of here. I moved them over to this side and of the room and it just takes up too much space near the workbench. So we're going to put the back plates on and move everything out and reorganize everything in the whole room. On these mesas, I think it's just a they just use this little bar to make sure nothing reaches in and breaks the tubes out. It's a good idea, but it doesn't really cover everything. I wonder how it works for RF interference. All right, take out the foot switch and the power and everything. This one will go in a little bit easier. What happened was over the weekend, I got a really bad microphonic tube and I discovered it was a, uh, whoever had this amp before me had put a, was a 5751. It was a good sounding tube. What is it? It's right here, 5751, tongue sole. It sounded really great, but it was extremely microphonic. If you tapped on the front, it would go boing. So I replaced it with a, uh, I had a long plate tube in the Mesa and this this amp seems to do the vintage modern here this amp seems to do really well with a long plate tube in V1 which is probably why this tongue sole was in there can you see it it's a long plate uh, let me show you what the difference is compared to a short plate 12ax7 You see the differences? Now, generally a short plate will be less microphonic, uh, but they just don't sound as good, especially not in V1. Uh, the first tube in the circuit always has the most effect. There we go. I got this uh, PV. 412 has Sheffields in it. I think they're 1290s. Great sounded cabinet. Uh, when I joined the church band, they said I couldn't bring my 412. So I had ended up selling it to a friend and I regretted it immediately. Uh, first of all, I really enjoy the cabinet. And second of all, my dad had bought that for me probably 25 years ago and he had recently passed away and I regretted getting rid of it. My dad was always very supportive of me uh, in music. He always liked to listen to our songs and uh, he always got our cassettes when we put them out. Um, he was just, he was really good about supporting the kids with music and I really appreciate it. So I definitely wanted that back and my friend sold it back to me for the same price that I sold it to him. So basically I just rented it to him for a while. 
uh, just glad to have it back. All right, looks like I'm making some progress here. I got the amps back over where they belong. Uh, it's just more room in the in the whole area over here. It was blocking this whole section here. It's a little bit bare right there. I think it needs something. Oh yeah! We're gonna get that up right there. All right. My wife got me this poster for my birthday, and now. Bob Ross is the official patron saint of homespun effects. Oh, I need a Mr. Rogers poster and I'll have a complete area of peace and love. Ah, these good guys, good guys. We're gonna try out this Tube Screamer build finally. Uh, this is my clean sound. I'm going through the Vintage Modern on the low dynamic range. We're gonna go with the high dynamic range later, but we're just gonna see what the pedal does. You can see the settings. Here we go. Turn the gain down to around nine. Crank this. And we're gonna see how it cuts some of the lows. A lot of people use a tube screamer like this with the level cranked, the gain down low, just to tighten up their sound. dynamic range and try that. Might be too loud. what the 
gain does. We're gonna turn it up to about about there, two thirty. <laughs> again turn down the level a little bit You see it doesn't cut out as much bass. We're going to high dynamic range. It also has a lot more gain. I like it in the normal position with this right around just above noon. Well, we're going to give it away, so I'd like to send it to somebody. All right, we're going to give away this pedal, but there may be an issue. It is not ROHS compliant, so it cannot go to the European Union. Um, may not be able to send it outside of the United States at all. So if you would like a chance to win it, comment down below and tell me where you're from. Um, maybe we can make some other kind of arrangements, maybe get a circuit board sent to you instead uh, that you could put together. Maybe that was, that's what we'll do. Anyways, I'd like to specifically thank my Patreon supporters. Oh, it's really appreciated. Uh, we got a new new one, Matt Tucker. Thanks so much. We got Matt Mills and Stealth Parrot. And one guy that supports me all the time is Teacupper Mike. I'd really like you to check out his channel on YouTube. Uh, he's not just a financial supporter of the channel. He also sends pedals, uh, both to try out and to repair. Uh, really appreciate him. Teacupper Mike on YouTube. Check him out.
Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day.